It starts off crispy, melts in your mouth, explodes with flavor. This is the kind of party I'm talking about. What a way to enjoy dragon fruit. Hey there folks, welcome to the channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna share with you how I conquered the dragon fruit chip. If you've been watching our channel for some time, you know that I absolutely love the dragon fruit. So much so that I've dedicated my entire backyard to growing a dragon fruit orchard. And when you have that much dragon fruit available, you're gonna have to find creative ways to use it. And enjoying dragon fruit chips is just one of those ways, but there is one huge problem. Let me show you. So I picked up this random brand of dragon fruit chips at our local store. So it says here, baked crispy chips, dragon fruit, never fried, no sugar added, whatever. Let's open it up, all right? So we just bought this pack and we're gonna open it up for the very first time. And this is what our chips look like, okay? So here we go. This is our clump of crispy baked dragon fruit chips. I'm not even sure why it's that color as the variety is a white variety, which is a pretty typical variety for dragon fruit. I will say that these are not sticking to each other like most dragon fruit chips will. Most folks will try to dehydrate dragon fruit and it turns into a really gummy, really sticky, almost like a fruit leather. These are coming apart fairly easy. They are definitely not crispy. Let me show you one of these chips so you can see what's going on. There you go. Does that look appetizing? Very flimsy. Kind of like a fruit leather almost. Okay, let's just eat it. Hmm. Okay. It's got a strange flavor. Slightly burnt a little bit, probably because of the baking and maybe that's why it got its color. This particular bag says it's 35 grams, so a little more than an ounce. Cost me about six bucks, 650. So it wasn't cheap. Overall, it's not very exciting. It's more like a, a bag of disappointment, actually. And when I eat dragon fruit chips, I want it to be exciting. I want it to be flavorful, colorful. I want it to be a party in my mouth. The dragon fruit is an absolutely incredible fruit and it has so much to offer. And I believe that this right here just does not do it justice. So let me show you how we fix that. First thing we had to do was get our hands on dragon fruit and I got a bunch of it, 250 pounds. Lots of different varieties, some locally, some from a buddy's farm. This one is super tasty. And what I thought would be a really cool idea was to take a lot of different varieties and turn them into dragon fruit chips. And so what we ended up doing was taking about 50 pounds of dragon fruit and basically applying this particular method to it. So let me just kind of show you a few varieties. And these are some of the reds and pinks that we'll be using. As you can see, I'm already deep into dragon fruit. It is such an amazing fruit. Interestingly enough, most people only believe one or two dragon fruit varieties exist. There are literally hundreds, and we're going to be taking a whole bunch of them, something like 20, 25 varieties, and turning them into chips. We are going to be using our Harvest Right freeze dryer. So I've got my Harvest Right tray with a silicone mat. We're also going to be using this very, very thin silicone liner that I bought, and that's going to create our shelves within that tray. By using this liner, we'll be able to put three up to four layers of dragon fruit, which will be able to maximize our shelf space. And by doing this, I'll be able to do 25 pounds per cycle. If you don't have that little liner, you can only do one row. And obviously that'll take quite a bit of time and energy. So let's put that up. We'll get back to that in a second. Let me show you how we're gonna process our dragon fruit. So this is just a typical Hylocerus costaricensis, very common variety where I live and absolutely gorgeous color. And so after slicing it in half, I'm just gonna give the base a little nick. I wanna give the skin of the dragon fruit a little cut because we're gonna be doing half moon chips. So I'm just gonna literally peel that flesh off that dragon fruit just like so. Now, if you wanna do circle chips, then you don't have to slice it at all. Just very carefully peel your dragon fruit and you can make circle chips. So we're just gonna do this one. And remember every dragon fruit uh, moving forward is gonna be processed this exact same way. Let me show you some of the other varieties. This variety is called Godzilla. Right here at the top, this variety is called Red Gina. Very interesting, sweet, almost beet-like flavor, a little earthy. This one is called Zamorano. This one has a mild, slightly floral flavor, a little sweet, not too sweet. I did want to add a spectrum of color for these chips. So we are going to crack into Vietnamese giant, very mild, almost melon-like flavor. This variety right here is called Physical Graffiti. It is an absolute must if you're into dragon fruit. And so let me go ahead and show you the process. Once I got all those peeled, we're just going to take a box grater. 
And utilizing the slicing blades, we're going to very carefully run that dragon fruit down those slicing blades. Now, if you have one with three like this, then you can work super fast because you could do three chips at a time. And because dragon fruit is super tender, it cuts incredibly easy. Our slices are super thin. I want to say three mils, maybe. Here's just an example of Zamorano physical graffiti. That white one there is Pepino Dulce. And notice we have our first layer down on that silicone mat. I'm going to go ahead and put one of those thin silicone dividers. And we're going to add layer number two to our Harvest Right tray. We're putting down a second divider. And we're now on layer number three. And we're not going to stop there. We're going to put down a third divider. And we're going to put a fourth layer just so that you could see what happens when you really maximize your shelf space in your Harvest Right freeze dryer. All right, so there we go. We've got four layers of dragon fruit. I do like to pre-freeze mine. Let me show you some of the other trays that we did. We did a total of 10 trays with four rows of dragon fruit on each tray. This is what they look like. Lots and lots of different varieties. Like I said, a total of 50 pounds of dragon fruit over 10 trays. So that's basically five pounds per tray. I'm going to stick this in my freezer and get it super cold while we do that. Let's go ahead and customize our settings. So we hit customize on the Harvest Right menu. We're going to keep the initial temperature to negative 20. You want it ultra cold. Because I am pre-freezing my dragon fruit, we're not going to put an extended extra freeze time. We're only going to do about four hours. If you can't pre-freeze your food, I would absolutely do a 12-hour extra freeze time. Dry temp is going to be 125, and extra dry time is going to be 12 hours. Not a problem. Let's hit save and let's hit start. And now we need to go through a cooling stage. So we need to wait 15 minutes before we actually load up our trays. And I know it seems all this is happening back to back, but just so you know, my dragon fruit has been pre-freezing for about five or six hours. And at this point, we're now setting the chamber so that we could set our dragon fruit in it. So 15 minutes have passed. Notice the inside of the chamber is nice and cold. As you can see right here, my dragon fruit is ultra frozen, very, very frosty. And we're going to go ahead and load up that freeze dryer. Once it's fully loaded, we close it down and we wait. And this particular process took about 42 hours. You can see right here, we are in the final hour and 14 minutes of our dry time. 42 hours and 43 minutes is what it's taken so far. If you take a little peek right there in the top right hand corner, you can see the elapsed time and the temperature. We're at 125, 126. Absolutely beautiful. These should be nice and dried. Let's go ahead and hit cancel, pull these trays out and see if they're done. All right, let's take a look at one of our trays of dried dragon fruit. Let's gently peel that divider off and see what happens. Now, remember, we have four rows of dragon fruit. Did they dry evenly? That's one question we always get, you know, since we've been talking about maximizing your, sh your shelf space. Uh, how well do they dry? Well, you guys are going to get to see it firsthand. Our first row is coming off beautifully. Let's go ahead and place that into a tray. Very little stickage, absolutely perfect. There we go, nice and clean. Let's do divider number two. How does this one come off? All right, I gotta tell you, these are kinda feeling a little crispy. We're gonna give it the good old fashioned taste test in a minute, but divider number two came off no problem. Let's put that in the tray. Well, that silicone divider is amazing. Look at this, let's just give it a snap. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Crispalicious. Let's take off divider number three. Divider number three actually took off some of that bottom row as well. So I have a feeling we've got top and bottom dragon fruit. There it is. Not a problem. As we remove the ones from the top, the ones from the bottom come right off. So it seems like where the heat was concentrated, some juice from the dragon fruit caused uh, maybe a few of them to stick together. But they do come off relatively easy, just like so. There we go. All right. So that is row number three and four. What's remaining on the silicone mat slides right off. And I am extremely pleased with this. This is a tray with all of our dragon fruit. Look at this. Snap. Oh, wow. That is awesome. I'm loving the way they turned out. Love the snap. 
Love the size. Love the color. So far, so good. I can't wait to taste it. Okay, the word of the day is hygroscopic, all right? You need to be aware of that when making freeze-dried food, especially freeze-dried dragon fruit, because it is going to want to absorb the moisture in the air. That's what hygroscopic means. And that means if you do not put them up almost immediately, they're going to lose that snappiness, all right, that crunchiness. And so what we need to do is we need to either place them in an airtight container with a moisture absorber or in a mason jar or something like that. I'm going to separate these right here, and let me show you how I'm going to package these up, all right? So I'm just going to take a vacuum seal bag and place these chips in there. And I know it doesn't look like I'm being too gentle, but you got to be gentle with it because they are quite fragile. All right. So once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple moisture absorbers, toss them in the bag, and then just put a seal on it. You definitely don't want to vacuum seal that bag because you will have dragon fruit crumbs. And this is the literal fruit of our labor. 50 pounds of dragon fruit turned into five pounds of dragon fruit chips. Notice none of the bags are vacuum sealed. They're just sealed. Uh, I personally like this way. This is kind of a nice presentation. Roughly about 40 grams per bag. Got a little moisture absorber in there. Lots of different flavored dragon fruit sealed on the top, sealed on the bottom, ready to go out the door or grab for a super tasty fruit snack. Amazing. Check that out. Doesn't that just look fun? That's what I'm talking about. Let's give it a taste. All right, folks, moment of truth. What do these chips taste like? Check that out. I only grabbed three varieties. I didn't want to bore you with trying all the different varieties we had. We ended up with about 27 different varieties of dragon fruit in our chips. This is physical graffiti. This one is Zamorano, and this white one is Vietnamese Giant. And the first thing that I noticed, if you remember when we first started this video, the commercial dragon fruit chips were almost orange, kind of burnt orange, burnt brown. And these have every bit retained their original color and that's thanks through the process of freeze drying. So one of the claims to having a freeze dryer is that it not only retains the color, it retains the nutrients and it enhances the flavor. All right, here we go. What do they taste like? <laughs> that's crazy. Not only is it ultra crispy, but the flavor is actually magnified. I mean, once you remove all that water, that sweetness really comes through. The Vietnamese giant, in my mind, has these hints of honeydew melon, a little cantaloupe, um, a, a tinge of grape, and they are bursting in, in my mouth right now. Physical graffiti, let's see what it tastes like. <laughs> Wow, this is my absolute favorite dragon fruit right now in the fresh form, and it does not disappoint in a chip. I mean, you get this extraordinary balance between acidity and sweetness. A lot of really complex flavors in this dragon fruit. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try the Zamorano. <sighs> Each one of them are so radically different and incredibly delicious. In my opinion, the fresh version of this fruit isn't very sweet, but the chip version of this Zamorano is actually bringing a really lovely sweetness. It's actually more enjoyable in the chip version for me than in the fresh version. <laughs> it starts off crispy, melts in your mouth, explodes with flavor. This is the kind of party I'm talking about. What a way to enjoy dragon fruit. Now, one thing you need to know about these chips is that they will want to continually try to absorb moisture from the air. And if you let them do that, they will no longer be crispy. So it's super important to keep them in an airtight container at all times. If you have moisture absorbers, toss one or two in there, depending on how big they are, and they will be absolutely amazing. And this actually got me thinking, you know, if you have an orchard or a farm, or sometimes you end up with a large amount of dragon fruit that you can't sell, or maybe you could buy a lot of dragon fruit on the cheap because it's about to go bad, Making dragon fruit chips is a great way to turn that fruit into something that is extremely shelf stable and quite frankly, incredibly delicious. The only problem with making dragon fruit chips like this is that it does require a freeze dryer. So if you already have a freeze dryer, I hope you could find some dragon fruit and make dragon fruit chips the way we did. They are absolutely amazing. 
If you don't have a freeze dryer and you'd like some more information, maybe you want to start freeze drying food for long-term storage or candy. If you want to have a little fun, start a side business or doing fruit like we did, uh, check the description box below. I'll leave a link to where we got it. We got it from Harvest Right. They're currently having a humongous sale. They have a lot of different sizes, a lot of different price points. And if you have any questions about my experience, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any questions about the overall process on how to make dragon fruit chips, you know where they go. Drop me a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.